Hey everybody, um, just want to put this video together to kind of talk about where I was on uh, 311 last year and talk about what's going on right about now and kind of catch everybody up, I guess, if you care about what happened to me since then. Or, um, and just kind of give everyone a, an overall maybe mood of the country that um, I'm experiencing firsthand. Um, you know, approximately 2.46 this time last year, um, we had this major earthquake that happened. And as for me, I was sitting in an office working um, when the ground started shaking and I ran for it. I ran outside into the parking lot. And the only thing that I can kind of remember in that instant was looking at a building across from us uh, and on the maybe 10th or 11th floor of that building seeing an office worker kind of just holding on to the to the window this office worker was holding on to the window and the look on his face was I, I'll never forget that man's expression he looked like it was gonna be over for him um, I've never seen a look of death so clearly plastered across someone's face before or since and in that same instant i was thinking wow this is it we're going to we're all going to die right here tokyo is going to come crashing down around our ankles you know um i had some flashbacks briefly of uh you know the earthquakes that i had that had been in the news before there was the uh the, the New Zealand uh, Christchurch earthquake that happened. There was uh, the Haiti earthquake that happened, and I remember just thinking, "Wow, I'm gonna be a part of I'm gonna be a part of history in the wrong way." <laughs> um, but you know, we here in Tokyo, for the most part, did survive. Some people, unfortunately, did lose their lives. Um, there was a building where the ceiling actually came crashing down and I think what a hundred people died in there and um, there was some accidents somewhere else uh, some building fires and so on and so forth um, there was a Costco in a suburb around here that um, where the uh, one of the ramps to the parking garage fell down and I think four or five people died in that um, which is very unfortunate but for the most part, in the initial earthquake, even in even near the epicenter, which the epicenter was, you know, a couple of hundred miles off the coast, actually, um, and maybe about 200 miles from here. Um, <clears throat> so it wasn't bad. What really hurt everyone after that, of course, was the tsunami. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but immediately for us here in Tokyo, um, all the trains and everything stopped and that's that's something that I think I'll probably never see again in my entire life hopefully hopefully um, Tokyo is the city where you have you know within the city limits of Tokyo if I can call it call it that there's 12 13 million people in the city limits within the metropolitan area uh, which also covers the second largest city in the country, Yokohama, which is where I live. And you've got five million people that live in Yokohama, in the city proper. Yokohama suburbs, Tokyo suburbs, it's weird. And the whole, this conurbation that we call the greater Tokyo area, you've got 10% of Japan's population. So, you know, within one in 10 Japanese people live within a 50 kilometer radius of uh, maybe the center part of Tokyo. Um, so chew on that. So when the train system here is closed and you have so many people stranded, it's a big deal. You had people sleeping in their offices. Um, you had people sleeping in the street uh, and subway entrances and so on and so forth. I was I was lucky. Um, I actually got on one of the trains that needed to be parked at the subway yards. Um, so, and I'm lucky my house, you know, is near one of those train yards. So since they had to move the trains off the line to the yard, 
I got on one of those trains and before they parked it, I got off at the station and walked uh, about a, almost a mile or so to my house, which isn't very far at all. Um, in the week afterwards, I was still in the process of moving actually from a city called Nagoya to, to Tokyo, to Yokohama actually. I moved up here to take a new job, which sub subsequently because of the earthquake and some other things that were going on there uh, didn't work out. Um, most of the management actually left the country. Um, one person in particular, the person who hired me for the job, uh, uh, after that day a year ago, the next time that I saw him was only on Skype. You had a lot of people, a lot of foreign people just abandon this place. And um, for whatever reason, I either agree with them or don't agree with them. Um, you know, there were some people who left because they got kids and they had a wife and, you know, and that sort of thing. And they were scared. Um, as you know, um, the tsunami that ensued took out one of the uh, nuclear power plants that they put on the coast of uh, the country for some reason. I, I still don't understand that logic. Why would you put uh, why would you put something that generates nuclear power and could possibly be hazardous someplace that could possibly be hit by a tsunami? <laughs> And you know a tsunami will happen eventually because this is Japan and that's, you know, come on, man. It, you know, the history of this place goes back literally thousands of years. And there's thousands, there's at least like 1,500 years worth of written history here that, every now, that says every now and then a huge wave that starts off from an earthquake will hit the coast. So, you know, why would you build a nuclear power plant there? And the answer is, of course, to save money. Uh, you know, I'll, I won't even, you know, I'll try not to touch upon the political, you know, side of any of that in this video. I want to keep it simply, you know, I want to keep it simple and just talk about what happened. But that'll be on another video, I promise you. Um, so anyway, you had a lot of people that left the country. And... If I had kids in the family, I probably would have been one of them because I, you know, I don't want my, for a simple fact, I don't want to take the chance of my kids glowing in the dark. But then you had, you had some people who left the country who weren't anywhere close. Um, Tokyo is not that close to the power plants that failed and melted down or whatever, but it's close enough to to be a little worried um if something happened immediately however there were some people that i knew that lived you know hundreds of miles away that left they use it as an excuse to leave and you know and left some things undone in this country and pretty much abandoned it in my opinion um the reason why i'm still here is because you know, this was my dream. Uh, it, it's always been my dream to live in, in this place. And when I first got here, I, I moved to Tokyo. I moved to the Tokyo area here in Yokohama um, exactly two weeks before the earthquake. Exactly two weeks. And, you know, from number one, from sim a simple financial standpoint, I couldn't go anywhere else. And, you know, I, I spent three, four thousand dollars U.S. of my money moving from one part of Japan to another. Um, and as anybody could tell you that lives here, there are certain things that are, that are very exorbitant in terms of financial outlay. And lodging is one of them. The initial cost of renting an apartment and moving house in Japan is ridiculously needlessly in most in many respects expensive um so you know in order to like just get the apartment that i live in right here you know just to hold it and say i want to live here i had to spend you know three times the amount of my rent you know and maybe just over half of that i'll never see again 
You know, I might get a third back as a deposit. So needless to say, people in Japan don't move around very often simply because it costs money. And then I moved from very, very far away, about a three, four hour drive from here on the highway in good traffic here. And I had to, you know, if it wasn't for one of my buddies um, helping me out with a van rental, it would have costed another thousand or so dollars U.S. for me to move my stuff. So financially speaking, I couldn't leave because I didn't have any more money. Um, I moved up here to also take a new job and had only been on a job literally a week, uh, an entire week working. And then the earthquake hit. So there wasn't much I could do. Um, the other reason why I didn't leave, though, was more of maybe a stubborn, stubborn reason, maybe. It's because I came here to prove myself and I came here to 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 do what I say. I'm very stubborn. Anybody that knows me will tell you that <laughs> in a lot of respects, I'm, I'm a stubborn person, maybe to the point where it could be a fallacy at times. But if I say a thing. If I say I'm going to do something, I believe in doing that thing, you know, no matter how ridiculous I might end up being. It could be wrong in the end, but I said I was going to do it. And so I'm going to do it. Um, so from that standpoint, this is something that I, I had been fighting for for, you know, at least 10, 10 years of my life. Um, I had wanted to be here in Japan um, and more more so actually in high school I wanted to live here so um, just from that simple fact I was going to I had made up my mind like you know okay well this is if I'm gonna die I'm gonna die here this is just how it's gonna go down with me and you know looking back maybe it was a little bit you know a little bit selfish to my family back home a little bit um and I admit, yeah, maybe so. But it, it, you know, it happened that way. The other part, though, was it, you know, it was impossible, actually. When I finally started thinking, maybe I should at least try to go home and visit my family. Um, it was impossible because everyone else was trying to leave and no one could get a flight out of here. You know, unless you were ready to spend an exorbitant amount of money. So... Um, needless to say, I, I stayed and I'm glad I stayed because, uh, you know, when one door closes, another one opens somewhere. And this is something that my mom, you know, love you, mom. <laughs> this is something that she's always told me, you know, and I had to kind of remind her of that when she was begging me to come home. I was like, come on, come on. I'm like, mom, I'll come home as soon as I, as soon as I can, I promise you. But I need to stay here to make sure that I have to ensure that I have a future, you know, in this place. And, you know, now I'm glad I did. Uh, I actually was able to get a very good job behind all this. And if it wasn't for the, the disaster, I wouldn't actually have the job that I have now. Um, one of the people that left the country, well, she didn't leave the country, but she left her job um and moved to another part of japan um you know she was working at the place that i work at now at the at the the school that i work at now for years and um it just so happens that you know i knew somebody who knew somebody who told me about the job so um i was able to get a very good job behind it and things worked out um, so I'm very grateful and very, very thankful that things did work out. But as you can see behind me, um, some things didn't work out for some people. Um, later on, on the, uh, on, on the 13th, um, about maybe an hour or so later, I was watching television, um, in the office when we decided it was safe enough to do so and we saw this huge like it, it looked like literally someone had decided to build a miniature model of a town and fill it up you know and just pour water over it it was a strange surreal feeling to see a tsunami 
roll into these these towns and you're watching this stuff live and it's it's for me as an american it was the same feeling watching this as as when i was watching 9 11 um that took place on two in 2001 september the 11th where you saw these planes hit the world trade center yeah and the only way at that instant that you knew that this was real you know if you didn't if you weren't in new york and you couldn't hear it with your own ears was you saw you know on the screen right about there a live book you know the words live written on the screen other otherwise you would have thought it was a movie well this was the same feeling for me um to to see this water come in and devastate these places i mean look look at these places i mean you know that guy on tv right there he's standing outside of the nuclear reactor and so that's why he's dressed that way you know and that that's another thing um the uh the tsunami hit the uh actually hit one of the power well they hit a lot of power plants actually but um the power plants themselves are safely designed to shut down um but of course it's nuclear nuclear fuel and you can't exactly turn off a, a uranium rod um it's still going to be hot and so you have to put it in these you know cooling pools and you have to keep water circulating over them which means you need a battery operated or a gasoline operated generator and i'm sorry whoever designed whoever thought let's put the generators in the fourth sub basement of a building you know was just a piece of work why would you do that okay water flows down so this of course the, the 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 tsunami hit and inundated the power plants the power plants had safely shut down in the earthquake about almost an hour before maybe 30 minutes beforehand and then you have this huge tsunami and instead of the generators being somewhere on high ground or on top of the buildings because the 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 reactors themselves didn't have water run into them so if they had put the generators on top of the reactor buildings which are quite tall um everything would have been okay but instead they submerged them underground and then of course it flooded and then all of a sudden this is where your nuclear meltdown happened it wasn't the tsunami's fault it was bad planning and bad judgment and corner you know cost cutting and corner cutting that you know made this area inha uninhabitable now and so you know i mean tsunami happened okay that's an act of god um whether you believe in god or not it's an it's a natural occurrence and it's been happening for thousands of years before and after us you, you know it's going to continue to happen but building a power a nuclear power station on the on a close line and then not building it high enough when historical records told you and the people who did the, the site planning told you and you just decided oh we're gonna save money and we're gonna like raise you know we're gonna we're gonna blow the cliff side off and 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 make it level with the ocean to save money oh that was just stupid and now you've got this issue that's going on so um, in the year since then, and I've talked for almost 20 minutes, I, I apologize. But in the year since then, um, what I've witnessed is I've witnessed in some respects the Japanese people coming together. I've witnessed the people, the, the foreign people that still remain here coming together along with the Japanese people. And we're, you know, a, a lot of us at the grassroots level are trying to do some new things um where there's this level now that i i've never seen and in japan there's always just been this blind trust of government officials and big big corporations and stuff and you know being an american once again you know we always have americans always have this healthy what i call a healthy skepticism skepticism of 
governments and corporations and organizations, right? We always have this, this, uh, we always have this blind, you know, just, just skepticism. Sometimes it's a bad thing, but I think it's healthy. Well, here, because the whole government, governmental organization and corporate organization basically has fell, you know, fell in, in a lot of respects. Um, now you're starting to see people kind of, you know, become human and starting to question things, which is unprecedented here in Japan. I think it's great, to be honest with you. You should never put so much trust, you know, especially in your immediate well-being and stuff in a huge organization. Um, because of even no matter how how well-meaning that organization can be, it's only as good as its weakest, you know, link. And if that link breaks, then a lot of people, you know, a lot of people get hurt. So what you're starting to see now are people questioning things and people, you know, asking those questions like, well, how did this happen? Why did this happen? You know, we give you our tax money and how are you spending it? You know, how are you going to tell me I can't live here anymore? You know, that sort of thing. Um, how do we rebuild? You know, people are really questioning that and I, I like it. Um, but then on the, on the other hand, you've got a lot of things that are still broken. Um, Japan's political system, for example, I mean, there's a revolving door of prime ministers in this country that is unprecedented. Um, you know, in the, in, in the three and a half years that I've lived in back in Japan, we've had three prime ministers, maybe four, I can't even remember, you know. Um, Four. We've had four prime ministers. Wow. Yeah. So you, nothing can get done. You know, nothing gets done. I mean, it's bad enough in my country where every four years there's a big an election. And so people seem like they're constantly running for something. Right. They're constantly campaigning. Seems sometimes that there's no time to actually get real work done. Right. Um, but here it's even more so. And especially now, you've got this nuclear incident that happened. You've got, you know, the corporations not doing what they were supposed to do, and now everyone knows it. Um, you've got a resource planning, you know, body that's not just that's all talk and not much action. You've got a rebuilding committee that can't decide what to start first and how to start it um and it's just like for me it's just like watching her you know the aftermath of hurricane katrina um for us americans it's kind of the same thing it's like looking at you know the louisiana state government and 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 fema in action you know it's the same thing for me and so to my japanese friends i tell them like well this happened in my country <laughs> you know after after you know, one of our bad natural disasters and, you know, so it's to be expected. On the other hand, though, this is Japan and there is a level of, of, of collective responsibility here that a lot of countries don't have. So, you know, in the immediate aftermath of the disasters that took place, people opened up their homes, people were very charitable and giving in, in a certain in a certain manner and help people out. Um, I personally, you know, volunteered myself to help foreign people that were coming from that area up there in Fukushima and Miyagi Ken and parts of Ibaraki Ken that had decided they needed to be away from that area down here. You know, I had, you know, a couple of people sleeping on my couch. I had some uh, some people that had just moved in not too far from here and I helped them out, get them situated and settled. Uh, I had some, I helped some Japanese people out, um, who moved down here from, from, uh, that area, from, uh, Fukushima and whatnot. So there's a level of charity in this, in this country. And, and, and this is one thing that I wanted to stress to everyone. Uh, 
the reason I felt safe immediately after the earthquake here in Tokyo is because no other place on this planet, I'm convinced, you know, would you have the level of collective calmness and coolness. People have this attitude like it happened and you know i'm i'm still you know in a it's a certain japanese thing where it's like i'm still not gonna be a burden i'm, I'm just gonna get stuff done you know we're not gonna clog up the streets we're gonna we're gonna orderly in in an orderly fashion figure out a calm way to get around this problem you know you had people just oh, I'm, a, I'm gonna buy a bike and ride home i'm not gonna you know try to do something stupid like you know rush the cab drivers and try to get a cab on already crowded road or you know bother the police who are obviously trying to do their job and with some meaningless question or something like that so um that's the reason that's another reason why i felt safe so <clears throat> anyway i don't know i've talked too long it's been 26 minutes and i've been talking i'm sorry for doing this very long um please give me your comments your questions your concerns um comment below um, and as for me, I'm staying, you know, if for no other reason, I still have a year left to go on my lease in my apartment. And I already told you exactly how much it costs to move. Um, I'm staying and I have a job to do. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens next year. Um, or if there's another big one that happens, uh, I'll decide then, I guess. Um, until then. Uh, this is your boy Star Wolf J7 coming to you from Yokohama Semi Live. Um, I'm gonna continue to do my best to show you my part of Japan, my side of Japan. I do hope that you enjoy the videos that I make and the the uh, the blogging that I do. Um, and if there's anything that you want to see or that you want to talk about or discuss, you know how to get a hold of me. Um, comment below um wherever you're seeing this video make a comment i check the social networks very very frequently and uh so i do hope we get a chance to chat until then peace out